say mahalo to all of our sponsors, the Surf Rider Kauai Foundation, the Sierra Club of Hawaii, Malama Moloa'a, and the Kilauea Neighborhood Association. Those have been our sponsors for this um, inaugural event, and I would like to thank everyone here for attending, and of course, um, all those who sponsored in time, monetary, and even um, sharing your mana'o as well. So I would like to, because I don't want to take any more uh, time, and I know we um, are starting a little bit later, but I would like to first call up our, our first speaker, uh, Richard Stevens. Um, Mr. Richard Stevens, here we go. Let's give a hand for Mr. Richard Stevens. Um, he will be uh, expounding on the topic of why are ancient trails important. So the platform is now yours. Thank you. I've been working with trails uh, all my life, actually. I was fascinated with tracks, tracking trails as a kid. Uh, I, in the military service, I hunted for the Ho Chi Minh Trail in Vietnam. Uh, when I came back, uh, I was hired to uh, be, one, be the first uh, trail researcher on the Big Island. Uh, Debbie Chang, who you'll hear from later, uh, hired me for that job. And so I had a dream job for five years of uh, hiking the backcountry of the Big Island and finding trails. In that time, I found three to 400 uh, trails. Uh, believe me, they're everywhere out there. Uh, if you know what to look for, uh, it's fascinating to see just what an incredibly rich uh, trail world is still left out there. And now here we are uh, working together uh, to save that world and to use it in ways that express the love that I mentioned before. Uh, this slideshow is uh, called Hawaii's Ancient Trails and their messages for today. Uh, this is an important thing to think about. Uh, we're looking back into ancient times, but we're getting messages uh, for uh, what it is we can do today uh, to tune into these trails, to learn from them, to connect with them, and then to see that they go on. Uh, so we're into preservation and restoration. Uh, there are four uh, categories that you can think about as you're uh, listening to this, about uh, the, the, how messages come to us from ancient trails. And so I want you to uh, think about these. Uh, we'll actually make that uh, six categories. Uh, the first two, uh, beauty and mystery. Uh, beauty, ancient trails are beautiful. Uh, back in 1992, uh, Debbie Chang and the Na'alahele staff put together a calendar called uh, Historic Hawaiian Trails. Uh, the photographs in that calendar were spectacular to show just how beautiful trails are. This is something that you folks here on Kauai you might think about doing too. Uh, you've got your beautiful trails here. A calendar would be an excellent way of getting more and more people uh, to see the, the beauty of these old trails. Uh, both in their uh, unworked on state and then after you clean the trails and they leap up uh, from the land uh, to show you just what they have, uh, you will be struck by how beautiful they are. Then there's uh, the category of mystery. Uh, plenty of messages of mystery that come from a trail. You're standing on an ancient trail. Uh, the thoughts that come to you have to be, uh, who has walked this trail before me? Where does it start? Where does it go? How is it connected to the whole great network of trails on every island? When you think about that network, you can think about a spider web uh, laid down over the land, and all the strands of the spider web uh, reflect the Maokamakai trails, uh, the Alaloa, the shortcut trails, the many kinds of trails uh, that were out there. And then you think of that spider web just pulsating with life. Uh, it's a fascinating thing to get into the whole trail world. Two more categories of magic and mystery, or magic and mana. Uh, the magic part of the trails is that uh, when you have your feet on the trail, uh, you become part of a great procession that stretches back into time. Uh, 
back to the very first person that ever walked that trail. And then you can think uh, that that trail does not exist uh, in and of itself, but is connected to all the rest. So you can imagine that when you're on any ancient trail, you are connected to all of the trails of that island. And that takes you back to the very first foot that was ever placed on the shores of this island. That's a powerful thing uh, to be tuning into and coming right up through the soles of your feet. Uh, there's mana. Uh, mana, spiritual force. Uh, the Japanese uh, have kami, the Chinese have their chi, the Indians their prana. This is energy and trails uh, pulsate with that energy. They radiate it. And again, when you're out there amid the ancient stones, uh, the trail bed, uh, the vegetation along the trail, uh, all of that is communicating with you. And the more open you are to it, the more you will receive. Uh, the last two, importance and connections. Uh, for importance, I want to turn to a, a beloved uh, member of uh, the Big Island community and the island-wide community, Herb Kane, uh, the artist, uh, historian. He left behind a wonderful legacy of paintings uh, that allow us to look into uh, ancient times. Uh, Herb Kane said, a culture without its artifacts is nothing. That's a very scary thought. A culture without its artifacts is nothing. Trails are precious artifacts. Uh, I'll refer again to Debbie Chang, first head of the Alaheli program. Uh, in her book on two historic trails in Kona, uh, she writes, uh, trails are part of a living heritage, a unique culture, living treasures. Notice the use of the word living here living treasures that show the survivability and the ingenuity of Hawaiians in the natural world. Uh, this is, uh, cannot be underestimated, the importance of trails in ancient times, and now we're seeing their increasing importance here in these times. In ancient times, it was the way the culture moved. The economy uh, went on trails uh, up to the uplands, uh, down to the shore, you can imagine that uh, every day and many nights too, especially full moon nights, uh, there was activity on those trails. And that's the way much of life was carried out. Those trails were the arteries of life in ancient times. And those arteries stretch right up to us here and now. And that brings us to connections. Uh, the English uh, poet and uh, novelist of the early part of the 20th century, D.H. Lawrence, uh, expresses it really well when he says that I am part of the earth, my feet know perfectly well. That kind of connection that we make with the land uh, when we're walking on an ancient trail is a connection that goes back to the very first person that ever walked that trail, all those that came after and all those that will come after us. And now here we are, uh, connected uh, by this common love and uh, working together. This is a really important thing that's happening here, believe me. Uh, this is going to have huge implications all over the Hawaiian Islands, uh, what uh, we are all doing here today. So beauty and mystery, magic and mana, importance and connections. So we're going to take a trip uh, now in a uh, few pictures uh, through the world of uh, ancient trails. These uh, are, as you would imagine, mostly big island trails, uh, but they look very much alike on all islands. You can factor them right into your own experience here. Uh, so you will see a number of photographs of trails. Uh, you will also see a number of uh, paintings uh, done by my Nai brother, Wiley Hua Gray. Uh, he passed away a few years ago, but uh, he was a colleague and contemporary of Herb Kane. They sometimes exhibited together. Uh, his paintings helped to tell the story uh, where there are no photographs uh, to do that. And so you will see a combination of uh, art and uh, photographs to tell this story of the messages 
that come to us uh, from these wonderful artifacts. So here we go. Let's see if this works. I'm going to signal hope over here. Uh, by the way, I thought it was really interesting also that the, the lady who's done much to organize this is also named Hope. I really think that is... Uh, that is the theme. A uh, hope that's powered by love and powered by unity. And uh, we thank you and all the people that brought this together. I'll be taking back to the big island much of the energy and inspiration uh, that I've received uh, from associating with you today and our events yesterday also. Uh, what you're looking at up there right now is a picture that was taken uh, from one of the observatories on Mauna Kea. And it's reminding us that every story is a universe story. Uh, if you're going to tell me the story of your life, I want to hear it right from the beginning. And that's the beginning of everything. And that means that we are connected in some very special and powerful ways. So the story of Hawaiian trails really begins uh, with the beginning of everything. And when you think about the energy uh, that is uh, out there, you want to, again, open your consciousness uh, to bringing it down here and immersing yourself in that energy. Uh, to think that we are all part of that is both a very humbling and a very empowering thought. Uh, so open yourself to it, and it will help to empower us all as we uh, carry out uh, this mission uh, that I think we've all been called to in our various ways. So we begin with the universe. And this is uh, Wiley Hua's painting called uh, Kumu, or Source. Uh, this is his depiction of, again, this uh, blast of energy uh, that started things off. Uh, the way he did this painting was uh, he painted it all black uh, to start off. Uh, that was uh, Po, the cosmic darkness that we read about in the Kumulipo. Uh, so out of that darkness then comes the world of color and form and energy and eventually us. We're lucky that we still have around the islands places where you can see this energy happening as uh, the islands rose from the sea. So that reminds us of the, the primal nature of all of this. Uh, no humans on the scene yet, uh, but uh, the mountains begin rising from the sea and uh, rising all the way up into the winds uh, where they act like a net, start to bring uh, the moisture down and from there, life begins to catch hold here at one of the Anculine ponds uh, along the west side of Hawaii, uh, where you can see uh, how this process might have happened. Uh, fresh water, uh, seeds uh, blowing in the wind, floating on the waves, uh, falling from the wings of birds, and beginning to clothe the land. It's really nature that determines where the, the trails will go. Uh, because of the kind of vegetative patterns, uh, climate, uh, that will make uh, resources uh, available to the trail makers who come later. Uh, this is a painting of Wiley Hua's called uh, When the Leaves Floated and the Trees Danced with Fire. Uh, he had a whole series of paintings that he called his Pele series, where he was tuning into these energies and trying to depict them in a, a way that began to bring uh, his people, he was half, half Hawaiian, uh, into the scene. Uh, it's pretty hard to see in that painting, but way over on the right, on the, the sea, uh, there is the site of the first uh, canoe approaching the shores of the islands. And so from over the deep blue, they came. And that's what uh, this wonderful organism here reminds us, uh, that the people who came here came a far journey uh, over uh, some of the deepest parts of the ocean in the world uh, to these shores. So the trail uh, extends uh, back into these times. Uh, Ralph Waldo Emerson has a wonderful quote that is, uh, beneath each deep, another deep opens. 
Uh, we can see that in our own lives. We can see it in the story of trails, uh, that it doesn't just begin with the first trail, but it's connected to all that came before, and now we are giving direction to what comes after. Just imagine now that uh, first foot uh, coming onto a trackless beach. Uh, all the islands would have had this moment when someone stepped out of the canoe and uh, put his or her foot on the sand. I'm guessing it was a him. Uh, at any rate, uh, all the trails of the island are connected to that moment. <clears throat> I believe firmly that uh, the first artifact that was made by the first people to come here was a trail. It was a trail to fresh water sources, a trail to uh, food sources. Uh, trails are precious artifacts. Uh, they are among the oldest things made uh, by the first people here. And believe me, any trail that you stand on today is connected to that magical moment when that first foot hit uh, the sands of these islands. Uh, this is the way Wiley Hua tried to uh, convey what he felt would have been the feeling of those first people coming, a uh, feeling of uh, relief after a long and uncertain journey, a uh, feeling of uh, joy and elation, and also of uh, wonderment of what is this place? Uh, do the gods live here? Will there be enemies uh, to uh, greet us? Uh, but definitely a feeling, uh, again, uh, we should try to get into this ourselves to keep that sense of wonder and awe that was surely part of the first landings here. Uh, this is a petroglyph that I found while uh, doing this uh, trail job, and I, I still, uh, once you get bit by the trail bug, and a number of you probably know this already, uh, you'll be looking for trails everywhere. <coughs> and they are everywhere, too. Uh, so uh, you find uh, other wondrous things in your search for trails, and uh, the, the feeling uh, that I get uh, from this petroglyph, the, the, the paddle uh, raised, and it looks like exaltation uh, overhead, uh, had to be part of the feeling of those first people, those first trail makers here. Another of his uh, Pele paintings uh, to try to convey what it must have been like to people coming from a non-active volcano world uh, to one in which uh, the volcanoes were still very active. Uh, also, uh, mountains so high uh, that, <coughs> excuse me, they had snow on top. And so again, that feeling of uh, wonder and excitement and passion that would have been part of uh, those first uh, days here for the first people. Uh, the trails eventually uh, spread from that first uh, imprint on the sand uh, to the highest mountains. Uh, we've just, uh, in May, had an important case that we'll be hearing more about later, uh, the Haleakala Trail case on Maui, in which I was uh, honored to be a, a part of uh, the team. And uh, so you can think that uh, the spread of trails then uh, over time uh, goes everywhere. It reaches uh, every part of the islands, uh, even those considered most inaccessible. And so these are reminders of that. Uh, there were undoubtedly uh, trails here already before people came. Uh, that would be another thing to cause wonderment, awe, and uh, questioning when uh, those first people landed here, who made these trails, and then uh, they probably saw a giant flightless bird uh, coming. Those birds would have had trails to their favorite uh, feeding grounds, too, and their favorite water sources. Uh, very large uh, birds. And so uh, the trails that we think about uh, have uh, other uh, users, uh, just like on the mainland, uh, the great trails of our history, the Oregon Trail, Santa Fe Trail, Wilderness Trail, uh, those were all... Uh, indigenous people's trails uh, before they became important in our history. And before that, they were game trails, uh, animal trails. And so we, it reminds us of our connections with the natural world. 
uh, and uh, studying the wisdom of indigenous people constantly reminds us of our connections uh, with that natural world and the lessons that we can take from it and need today. <clears throat> Here you see an example of a shoreline trail. This could have been like uh, the one the, that's a bird, by the way. It's called the moanalo, or the disappeared fowl. Uh, they would have made trails like this that then would have been uh, very useful for uh, the first people, and probably those first trails were uh, shoreline trails and uh, along the flowing streams. Uh, the use of uh, coral along the trail still is a useful uh, thing to guide you if you're out there walking in the moonlight, uh, the moon uh, shining on uh, ahu made of coral is a magical sight. And so, uh, thinking again of the kind of work that went into uh, their uh, first trails here, when we can see those today, again, it's an energizing uh, event. Of the uh, bringing of uh, plants from other parts of Polynesia and uh, seeing them become established then is also a part of the story of trails. And uh, I'm going to start blending in the theme of reforestation here. This is a lot of what we're doing on the Big Island now. It's combining trees and trails. It's a wonderful combination. Uh, those of you in uh, nonprofit groups, I'll tell you that uh, when we started doing this on the Big Island with our uh, own uh, nonprofit, uh, we were told there's a ton of money out there uh, for reforestation. And so you can combine causes like trails and trees in a way that can really help to finance your efforts. Uh, right now also, uh, the U.S. Department of Agriculture pays over $11 per Hawaiian tree that you plant. So uh, if you uh, have any desire to reforest, uh, you have some excellent sources of help uh, to allow you to do that. Uh, you can plant a lot of trees in an acre of land, and at $11 per tree, that can help finance the kind of things that nonprofits are usually having difficulty uh, with, uh, the green energy that's necessary to make these projects happen. So those of you who are interested, uh, check into your uh, NRCS, Natural Resources Conservation Service. It's part of the Department of Agriculture. And you will find that uh, not only the planting of trees, but the preparing of land uh, for planting trees, they will subsidize. Uh, this uh, turns to another part of the world to give us an idea of what it looked like here uh, along the Lo'i. Uh, these are rice paddies, of course, and this is the island of Bali in the year 1967 uh, when I went there on R&R &R from Vietnam. And I was really struck uh, by the beauty uh, that the Balinese put into uh, their agricultural efforts along streams. And I realized that uh, very probably this is a lot of what uh, it looked like here in Hawaii. Uh, although you just substitute uh, kalo uh, for the rice there, and you can uh, picture how beautiful it was. Notice, too, the balance uh, between uh, the nature that has not been disturbed and the agricultural lands. Uh, it's a wonderful combination of uh, using what was there uh, with what uh, agriculturalists add. This is from the island of uh, Sri Lanka. And again, it's looking to other places to get an idea of what it looked like here. Uh, notice you can see trails running right up to the door of the house there that's along the beach, some of the vegetation very similar to what we have here. And again, you can uh, get ideas about what it looked like and how the trails uh, played an important part in all of these places uh, by some that remain today uh, to tell us what it looked like here. Over it all is the spiritual aspect. And uh, Waile Hua uh, loved the eel, the Hawaiian hawk, uh, that was very prevalent around uh, where he lived near Waipio Valley. And uh, so this, is, uh, this painting is called Amakua. 
And uh, it reminds us that in everything the Hawaiians did was the spiritual element. And that's a great thing for us to build into our work, too, to remember that there are, are different levels uh, to life. And the more you can access the higher and the deeper levels, uh, the more energy you will bring forth. And so this kind of reminder of what was here uh, can become part of what is also. Malcolm Akai trails uh, were really an, uh, probably the most important part of the economic lifeline uh, that linked the resources of the uplands with the resources of the shore and offshore. And uh, this is what a trail looks like when it's been cleaned. Uh, cleaning the trail is uh, getting the invasive vegetation out of the bed, uh, getting the, the curb stones back in place again. And uh, when you do this, when you clean trails, the trails literally uh, come to life again. And uh, it's a magnificent feeling to be part of this. Uh, kids love this. Uh, older people love this. It's a work of restoration. And I want to suggest to you that uh, your presence here is an example of what we are living through now, which is the age of restoration. Uh, you may feel frustrated with some of the battles that you've fought uh, and the direction things have gone, uh, but uh, we are in a new century now. Uh, the 20th century got the unfortunately appropriate name of the age of anxiety. Uh, now we're in a new century. We're in the 21st century. And the more you use this term, the age of restoration, uh, the more you think that way, the more it will happen. And I can tell you as a teacher in, uh, at uh, the UH branch in West Hawaii that uh, the young people are coming into our classes already primed for this, the kind of education that we heard about uh, from uh, our opening uh, Oli is of what uh, people, uh, young people are getting all the way from elementary now up to college. Uh, the age of restoration is here. And the more we can get behind that, the more we can join forces, as we are today, the more we will make it happen. So age of restoration, use that term and spread it around. It's happening all over the world. Uh, Wiley Hua's painting here uh, reminds us again of uh, the spiritual level that existed, especially uh, among the Ali'i, as he's picturing here, and Ii'ivi, uh, which he has combined uh, with uh, the look of a cape, uh, to remind us, uh, again, of the uh, structure of society here and of that spiritual nature which connects to the natural world. The Malcolm Akai trails, again, uh, when I mentioned uh, back at the beginning about the beauty of trails, uh, you really can see this uh, after you clean a trail about how beautiful it is and how it uh, illustrates, again, these kind of connections that are part of one of the principal themes of trails. Uh, this is a trail that uh, branches. It comes down from the uplands uh, you notice uh, then it uh, forks. It's going off in two different directions there. You can imagine people coming down from their work. In the, this is in the Kohala field system up in the northern part of the Big Island. Uh, I always imagine uh, friends coming along to this point of the trail. Some perhaps are going off on the, the right branch there, others on the left, and they're calling to each other as they begin to part, maybe making plans to meet down on the shore someplace. Uh, it's also a lot like life. Uh, you come to these points in life where you have to make these decisions. Uh, what do I do here? Which way am I going to go? And uh, in the case of applying uh, trails to this moment, uh, often we get guidance along trails in the form of ahu. And uh, those are the kind of things that we need to build into our life and our work uh, now, is seeking that guidance when we come to these points and then following the trail of life on. Uh, special stones along the trail. 
Well, this is called a pohaku okiaina, or land dividing stone. Usually large triangular shaped stones uh, that you find sometimes on the, uh, the borders of Ahupua'a or the Ili, the smaller divisions within the Ahupua'a. Uh, but again, reminders of the life that was lived before, perhaps now hidden uh, in vegetation, uh, but still with their stories, their messages. And again, when cleaned, uh, they are striking in their reminders of uh, the past. Amakua stones, uh, stones that are set up along the trail. Uh, perhaps uh, the people in a particular area uh, did that to honor their uh, family Amakua. But again, uh, part of the mystery of trails. Uh, that's part of the fun of them, actually, is not always knowing uh, exactly how to interpret what's there, but feeling the depth. And I think if you can do that, uh, it isn't necessary to know exactly uh, what was meant by this, but just to feel the power of it is important. Uh, this is an example of how these stones often are uh, beside the trail. The trail is running to the left of that stone that we saw in the previous picture. So trails as important uh, lifelines of spirituality as well as the economy and cultural development. Uh, this is a, a fishing shrine. Uh, this is uh, uh, taken from uh, some of uh, Wailehua and my uh, hikes together along the coastline of Kohala. And uh, many of these still remain also down at the end of the trail where you can imagine uh, the fishermen uh, on their way to fish and uh, making offerings. The tea leaf, whenever it appears in Wailehua's paintings, are to remind us of the spirituality of the ancient Hawaiians. Uh, this is a trail that's very much associated with Kamehameha I. Uh, this uh, goes down to uh, the shoreline at Hapu'u Bay in North Kohala. At the top of this trail is uh, the remains of the heiau, where Kamehameha uh, kept uh, the war god, Ku Ka'ilimoku. And so uh, when we walk uh, on this trail today, when we go down to this a favorite fishing spot, uh, again, you can imagine putting your feet uh, where the great man himself walked. Uh, that's a powerful thing to think about. Uh, we have a wonderful opportunity here to tune into directly uh, through the soles of our feet uh, the great uh, heroes of Hawaiian history. Uh, this is Wailehua's rendering of uh, Ku Ka'ilimoku. And uh, again, a reminder that uh, whether in peace or war, spirituality, uh, was uh, the overriding concern of Hawaiians. And uh, the way that uh, it's a reminder to us also that whatever our spirituality, you can deepen it when you're out there on the trails. Uh, this is a painting called uh, King Kamehameha Contemplates the Moon at Kapanaya. Kapanaya is a favorite uh, surfing spot. Most of the kids of Kohala learn to surf there. And uh, it's a place where Kamehameha and his friends uh, made a trail uh, to get their surfboards down to the beach uh, more easily. And uh, he's pictured Kamehameha uh, gazing at the moon. And uh, with the next slide, so we'll surmise what he might have been contemplating. Uh, he might have been contemplating the arrival of people uh, from the other world. Uh, this was of great advantage to him in many ways. Uh, petroglyph uh, carving of a whaling ship. And uh, so we've entered a new phase in Hawaiian history now. The trails go on, uh, but now there's a, a new element in the land. Uh, people from the outside world. And this is one of the things uh, that they were after. Uh, this is a sandalwood tree. This is a miracle survivor in a land where uh, cattle have uh, destroyed almost all the native vegetation and you just have uh, mostly kiawi trees going, growing. Uh, but still, now and then, you find uh, 
these reminders of the past. Uh, this is part of the whole reforestation effort that we're doing on the Big Island now. We're planting a lot of iliahi, a lot of sandalwood trees, and they are gorgeous trees. Uh, you can sometimes smell in the wind the fragrance of the sandalwood uh, blossom, and uh, that can help you to find uh, lone trees like this. Uh, this is a painting called Kauai Hai, and this illustrates the effects of the sandalwood trade. Uh, Kauai Hai, if you're familiar with it, is in, the, is in uh, Kohala, the northern part of the island. There's a harbor there. And it's one of the most land-battered places in the islands. Uh, the deforestation, which came about largely as a result of the sandalwood trade, there's plenty of sandalwood trade growing on the steep slopes leading down to Kauai Hai, uh, led to a gradual drying out of the land. Uh, there's a wonderful Hawaiian saying that goes, uh, rain always follows the forest. And if the forest is retreating, uh, rain is diminishing. And what you see in this painting is uh, those uh, ships uh, waiting offshore. You see people carrying the sandalwood logs uh, down to uh, be loaded on the ships. And you see uh, the land drying out in uh, stages. And this is, uh, this is what the land looks like in a lot of those places. This is a Maokamakai Trail you're looking at right here. Uh, but it's in a place where uh, first deforestation, then overgrazing, uh, then the trail filling up uh, with uh, wind blown and waterborne uh, silt uh, to the point where it almost is uh, not recognizable at all. But if you know what to look for, as I said, there are still hundreds of trails out there. And uh, they're waiting to be discovered and restored. This is a heiau called uh, the Navigation Heiau on the North Kohala coast. Uh, this is uh, where the Polynesian Voyaging Society still goes to have uh, ava ceremonies before their journeys. Uh, there was a a training school here, a university for navigators. Uh, some of our kupuna in Kohala uh, tell about their family uh, history and being part of uh, navigation and training for. Uh, again, uh, it's connected by trails. Maokamakai trails come to it. The shoreline trail runs past it. Uh, soon the national trail, the Alakahakai, uh, will make it or at least uh, along its base, uh, the trail will run also. So uh, the treasures that are out there along the trail uh, continue to tell us about the, the wonders of life in those times. This painting is called uh, Kipuka. Uh, Kipuka is an island of life in the lava sea. It's where recent flows of lava will come down and flow around uh, elevations, leaving behind a kind of island of uh, native vegetation. Uh, the trail runs around the base of this kipuka. That's a koa trees uh, on the kipuka itself. And the whole concept of the kipuka as an island of life is something that we can incorporate into our work today. Uh, with reforestation combining with uh, trail restoration uh, to form new kipuka. You can make kipuka in your backyard uh, with uh, plantings of Hawaiian plants. So it's a wonderful concept. The more kipuka that we can make throughout the islands, the more we will restore much of what has been lost. How do you find trails? Uh, if you have a helicopter, uh, that's, a, that's a good thing. Uh, we have uh, Dennis Hart here, who has been on the front lines of the, the trail wars in uh, Kohala, cleaning trails in the face of opposition from uh, landowners, uh, but yet believing in the mission. And uh, this, uh, this picture uh, shows just how many trails uh, there are out there on the land. So, uh, right now I'm working on a project in the old Kona field system uh, that's uh, nine acres of uh, unbulldozed land, and the trails are everywhere on this. So when you're in places where, that have been uh, part of these great agricultural systems, 
uh, you can look for a labyrinth of trails to discover. This is about phase one of, of trail searching uh, out there in the, the brambles and thorns and uh, peering into uh, the, the cover of uh, forbidding vegetation on the land. And yet that love that I mentioned back at the first is what propels uh, people like Dennis, and you'll hear from him later, and his crew. But it starts uh, with some reconnaissance work uh, that takes a uh, hardy souls uh, to get into and find all those trail remnants. Here's uh, again a picture of that, a uh, second stage of finding a little bit uh, clearer evidence. You see this beautiful uh, trail that's being uh, found here. And then the next stage is rounding up your friends and getting them out there into the brambles also. And uh, again, we have uh, people doing this on the Big Island, and the, the leader of them is here today. And we're glad to honor him for what he's done. Uh, but it's uh, getting people together, just like uh, you are brought together here now. And it's one of the, the great joys of life, I think, is to uh, be out there uh, working on trails and uncovering their wonders. And after some work, uh, you can see this as the result of your labors, uh, getting that trail back into the kind of shape that it would have been in, uh, in its heyday. And uh, it's just a matter really of uh, this process of cleaning the trail, bringing it to life again. And again, you can see uh, the beauty. These are trails that have been widened to accommodate uh, carts uh, in the early period of uh, Western contact. And so you start out with a trail uh, that is usually about double arms width length. And uh, once uh, horses and wagons are on the scene, then they're widened. So you usually can tell by the width of the trail uh, something about its uh, age and use. And again, those spiritual reminders along the trail. Uh, Kane stones, often uh, upright stones that represent uh, the god Kane. Agricultural areas will have those uh, usually uh, to uh, tune into the higher powers. Vegetation can often be your clue in where trails are. You notice here a fountain grass uh, has grown in the bed of the trail, uh, making it very clear where the trail runs. Uh, right now, we have an exciting project going on, which I hope is going to be duplicated on your island and all the islands. It's cooperation between a developer and, in, in this case, the university uh, to restore an ancient trail uh, that will be a public access trail. Uh, this is a really uh, momentous event, I think, in the history of trail restoration when you start to get that cooperation between the landowner uh, and those of us who are lovers of trails. I think whenever you can uh, do this, and as people become more enlightened and as people get more into the age of restoration, uh, you will find more cooperation uh, to do this and maybe even some assistance from uh, the government. What you're really uncovering out there is, as I said, just beautiful. Uh, there are different, uh, all kinds of different trails, each uh, with their own special nature. And again, it takes you right back to the first people who made that trail, to the people who ordered the trail made in a particular place, and then chose some of these beautiful surfaces uh, to run the trail over. It's almost like a, a picture like this uh, speaks uh, for itself in terms of uh, the beauty, the mystery, the magic, uh, the mana, the importance, the connections. It's got it all. And again, uh, while this is a, a recent addition to the trail, it attempts to uh, duplicate uh, what was and especially is making that effort uh, to remind us 
that uh, the making of trails, the traveling on trails, the purposes for which people were on the trails all had this spiritual element. And again, the more we can tune into that, uh, both to keep us humble and to empower us, uh, the greater will be our successes. These are some of my students, uh, again, on one of these trails that uh, the trail warriors uh, of Kona have, uh, have brought to life again. And so these are ideal teaching uh, devices. Uh, I take my students out uh, several times each semester to work on trails and to plant trees. Again, that magical combination, trees and trails, native reforestation and ancient trail restoration. Uh, students love doing this. And also, as I said, they are primed for it already by the kind of education they're getting in the lower grades now. It's a, a, a very encouraging thing to see how motivated they are and how dedicated uh, to the culture. This is uh, the Veterans Cemetery in West Hawaii. This is a major success story uh, that our students have uh, carried out over the last 10 years now of bringing the dry land forest back. The lowland dry forest is the most endangered ecosystem in Hawaii and around the world. And so uh, working in the dry lands is more challenging, of course, than uh, planting trees in the wetter areas. Uh, but as you can see here, uh, it can happen. It's choosing the right species. It's getting the right people together. It's uh, restoring the trails that make it possible to get into these areas. And uh, the joy then as it all starts to happen, as you really see the forest coming back. Uh, the, the dryland forest actually had more species than the upland wet forest, which is uh, uh, not the case generally as you look around the world. Uh, but here in Hawaii, uh, the dryland forest was uh, rich uh, with species. Uh, we plant in the uplands also, again, guided by the trails, uh, conducted to our planting places by the trails, so that wonderful combination is at work again. Uh, this is in the Coloco area above Kailua in Kona. And you can see the uh, golden uh, bark on the koa trees there. Those are young koa trees. Uh, koa trees, if they're planted in a place that they like, can grow 10 feet a year. Uh, those trees that you're looking at there are about three years old. And uh, so uh, both in the uplands uh, and in the, the lowlands, the drier areas, uh, the combination of trees and trails uh, works in a magical way. And this is uh, our last uh, picture here. Uh, this is a place that, uh, this is up in uh, Kohala Mountain. It's near the summit of Kohala Mountain in the north of the Big Island. Uh, it's a place uh, my son uh, was an avid pig hunter when he was in high school. And uh, he and his friends called this the Green Temple. And uh, I just love that name uh, for this place because it is so evocative of, again, the, the spiritual world that we've referred to several times now. Uh, the green, uh, which indicates a movement that's going on all over the world now, too. That's another reason you can be hopeful about the age of restoration. And uh, the wonder that trails can lead you to. Mahalo. Thank you again for your, for your presentation. Um, before we before we go on to